Hello campers. Uh, today is Sunday, September 23rd. Sorry, I'm a little slow right now. <laughs> I'm so tired. So, so tired. It is lunchtime on Sunday. Uh, this is the Wayward Skein podcast. I am Lynn, your host, and um, I worked a four and a half hour shift last night after having gone and done some very physical stuff during the day, and I'm just... <laughs> I'm so tired, I didn't make tea. That's how tired I am. <laughs> it has been a heck of a week. Um, I told you guys last week that I was starting a new job in the evenings, and I have, and I'm way too old for this. <laughs> it's been so long since I've worked retail. Well, okay, it hasn't been all that long. It was 2012, but it's I, I'm too old for this. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. Um, so anyway, there has not been a whole heck of a lot of knitting going on. I do have some to show you, but uh, you're going to be a little disappointed because there's really not much to show. Um, we'll start right in with the test knit I'm working on. This, these are the Celestial Socks by Brandy Miller Designs, who was also the, uh, the benefactor of our lovely giveaway last month. Um, so this is the front of the sock. This is the back of the sock. So there's, uh, these are to represent stars, and this is the moon. It's a super pretty pattern. I'm not, I'm still not sure how I feel about the, uh, the cast on edge because I had never done a twisted rib two by two um, cuff before, and apparently I knit it super tight. So, <laughs> well, it made my cast on edge very tight. Whereas this is my regular two by two rib, just knit pearl, and it's super stretchy. Like the edge does not come in at all. This one, it's like the, the edge is super tight. So I'm still not sure how I feel. I was able to get it up onto my foot. I'm not sure how it's going to go over my heel or how it's going to fit on my calf. So we'll see. Um, I'm going to finish them because I really, really, really want to finish these socks. They're super pretty. I mean, look at that. Isn't that cute? What's that lace? So I'm very much looking forward to continuing these socks. Oops. I think I just kicked my cat. I'm sorry. Hi. Hi. <laughs> She's looking at me like, what the heck was that for? I'm sorry. Yes, I know. I kicked you. <laughs> I've, I normally don't sit with my feet extended out in front of me, but right now that's, I don't know, I'm just really tired. <laughs> it's been a heck of a week. Uh, it's been very eventful. Um, we had this big training thing going on at work where we had people coming in from all over the country. I was not involved with this in any way, shape, or form. I was just the logistics girl and, you know, the get things where they need to be girl. But it was a lot. And my, t my entire team was down there. Well, okay. My boss and two of her managers and their teams were down there. Uh, I still had two managers upstairs, but, I mean, they were so self-sufficient that it was like they weren't there. <laughs> So I didn't have a whole heck of a lot to do during the day, and um, I, I was, you know, cleaning up things electronically and uh, trying to clean up my office a little bit, but it was a heck of a week. I was having, I'm having a lot of trouble falling asleep at night, alternately falling asleep and falling asleep as soon as I get home from work, so... It's the temperature change and the time change again. Well, the time change won't happen for another couple of weeks. But uh, the temperature change has been making me want to kind of hibernate. <laughs> but at the same time, I'll get home from work, I'll start doing stuff, and then I won't, you know, bedtime will come and go, and I'll not notice because I'm not at all tired. So anyway, that's been my weird week. Um, so I have made some progress. The last time you guys saw this, I think I just had the cuff. And uh, so I've now finished the two charts uh, for the leg. I don't know if I'm going to, I may just continue the leg for another pattern repeat of, of the lace. Um, just because it's super pretty and I like it and I want more of it. So um, I may do that. I haven't decided yet. These are also an experiment because I'm knitting them on 2.25 millimeter needles, which is a US one. And I normally use a 2.5 millimeter, which is US one and a half. So it's an experiment to see if I like the tighter gauge, because with my normal gauge, I feel the pearl bumps under my foot, and they bother me. 
I have special precious little princess feet, <laughs> apparently, and the slightest thing under my feet will really, really bug me. Um, a few weeks ago, I went outside to take out the compost, and my compost bin is literally five feet from my front door. Walking on that gravel, like, it's not gravel, it's, um, it's not concrete either, it's uh, like an asphalt path. That hurt so much. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I was like, when did I, you know, I remember when I was like 20, 22, I would walk around barefoot all the time. I went an entire summer without shoes once. When the heck did my feet become so sensitive? <laughs> and uh, so anyway, I don't walk around barefoot much anymore. Um, so the new, the yarn, let's, let's try to stick to one subject here because it's been one of those days. So the yarn is Fleece Artist Trail Sock that was hand dyed by my lovely friend Crystal, who is Chris Knits on Ravelry. She used to be Chris Rock One, I think. Um, now she's Chris Knits. And so this is lovely stuff that she dyed herself. It's a tonal pink, a nice soft baby pink. And I'm really enjoying knitting with it. Look at how it's turning out. It's so pretty. It's stripier than I thought, and you know, I don't get that from looking right at it, but seeing it on the screen, it's a lot stripier than I thought it was going to be. Um, but it's it's a really, really gorgeous tonal, and thank you very much, Crystal. It's uh, it's fun to knit with, and it's super pretty. So anyway, the sock continues pace, and this is the only project I currently have on the needles that qualifies for the pigskin party, so I really need to get my button gear. Because so far, the only points I have are for scavenger hunt questions. <laughs> Um, the only other thing I have knit on this week, and this has been my bus knitting, so that it didn't get knit on a lot on a bus, but yesterday it got a whole lot of love, because, uh, well, I'll tell you guys about that in a couple of minutes. And I just looked at my thermostat, and holy crap, it's cold in here. Yay! Fall is finally back. Um, I froze my butt off yesterday. I actually turned the heat on and closed my bedroom window. <laughs> Um, for those of you who know me, that's a bit of a shock because it's not even October yet. My bedroom window has been open since late April. It normally stays open until mid-October. It was cold yesterday. Plus, I got very warm at work and once the sweat cooled, I was freezing. I was sitting here shivering. And, uh, so yeah, that's, that's that. So the other socks I'm working on are the Peppermint Mocha Socks by C.C. Alman, And I'll bring it up closer so you can see the lovely stitch pattern. Come on. You can do it. Hey. Camera. There we go. Sometimes you just have to whack it a little bit. <laughs> Not really. Percussive maintenance doesn't work very well on sensitive electronics. So th these are the Peppermint Mocha Socks uh, by C.C. Alman. I'm now done the leg and ready to put the heel on, but for that I needed the pattern and I didn't have it with me. So um, I think this was about here when you guys saw it last week. Did I have this last week? I don't remember if I had finished, because I, I finished the other sock. I knew I was close to finish. Yeah, I think I had, I had gotten like here and discovered that the foot was too short. So I ripped back the toe. <laughs> Yes, because I remember this now. I was knitting it on the bus on Monday morning, and there was an accident on the way to work. And so the bus was delayed about 20 minutes. I had this thing knit out to here. <laughs> I had an extra four inches on the foot from that bus trip. So then I had to rip back again <laughs> and uh, reduce the foot a little bit. And uh, now it should be perfect for Sylvie's foot. Her, her feet are just a little bit longer than mine. I think like maybe a third of an inch longer than mine. So, And I found them a little bit short when I tried them on. When I showed them to you last week, I tried them on. And um, so I found it a little short on my foot. So I wanted to add a good, you know, bit to, uh, to what I already had. So I did. And now they should fit her foot. I don't know why I didn't think of trying them on my own damn feet before, but yeah, that was not my finest moment. So these are made out of Tilting Planet Apollo Sock in her Ocean in a Bucket colorway, and I love it, Sylvie loves it, and these are the most wonderful socks. 
I'm not sure how I feel about the short row heel. I don't think it fits me particularly well, but I mean, it doesn't not fit, but it's a, it's not the same sensation as the heel flap, which is what I'm accustomed to. So I might like them if I wore them around a bit, but they're not for me, so I'm not going to. Um, so yeah, that's the finished one and this is the new one. So as you can see, I finished the leg and I'm ready to go to town with the heel. So that will probably be done this weekend among, among the other, you know, million and one things I need to do this weekend and it's Sunday afternoon. So <laughs> man, working Saturdays has really put a, well, I would have been okay. Let me finish with the sock first. <laughs> Wee! Just all over the place. I'm not quite caffeinated enough. I had about half a Diet Coke left last night that I finished this morning. So um, I'm not quite caffeinated enough to, to deal with braining right now. Um, so this is out of Cece's book, which is called Coffee with Cece, which she sent us for review a couple of, well, when it came out. And uh, I, I've been wanting to knit patterns out of that book ever since. So just to show you how it stretches out, it's such a nice stitch pattern. I love it so much. And this yarn is so squishy and soft. It's just a, a standard 80-20 merino and nylon, but so soft. Um, and these are done on 2.5 millimeter needles, which is the US 1.5, which is my standard sock needle. So that's that. It lives in my absolutely fabulous kitchen counter crafter bag Jenny Java Jenny uh, made this for me and I love it so much not just because it has lots of pumpkins on it but that has a lot to do with it um, I do still have my two pumpkins I, I I've really dropped the ball this week I was gonna make soup with them so I may do that tonight um, basically it takes six minutes to cook a whole pumpkin in the instant pot so <laughs> Um, so it takes me about six minutes to prep the pumpkins and then I just toss the puree into the pot with some chicken stock and some coconut milk and some other things and yeah. So um, I'm probably going to make that tonight. Last year I made a curried coconut pumpkin soup that was amazing because I have some, um, not coriander, that's not what I'm looking for, cardamom pods that I like to toss in there and then I take them out when the soup's done. So I basically, it's just basically pumpkin, chicken stock, or veggie stock if you're vegetarian. Um, a can of coconut milk, not coconut cream, coconut milk. And I usually use the lower fat one for soups because it doesn't, it gets very thick if you use the higher fat content ones, which is fine if you like a very, very thick soup, but the pumpkin's already pretty thick. So um, I usually toss an onion in there some black pepper and some cardamom. That's about it. That's all I, I, I don't put salt in my soups. Um, I don't tend to cook with salt in general. So, um, to your own taste, if you like salty stuff, put salt in it. Um, cause I prefer to just season the individual bowl. And, um, I find that when you salt something before putting it in a jar, cause I put my soup in jars and I put it in the freezer. Um, to, to save it. And um, I find that it gets a lot saltier over time if you add the salt before you put the in the jars, but that's just me. I'm not a big salt person. I don't even know if I have salt right now in my kitchen. I've run into the problem over the last several years that whenever I need salt for a recipe, I actually have to go out and buy some because what I have turned into a brick <laughs> or my daughter used it all, one or the other. Um, so I'm also using this little Needle Keeper from Mandy Pinecone, Mandy Pinecone Crafts Podcast. Um, I feel like I'm all over the place right now. So that's all I have accomplished knitting-wise. I'm a little disappointed in myself. I really wanted to get that baby sweater finished, but I didn't fin find... <clears throat> Let's try that again. I didn't find my size 6 DPNs. So um, I didn't finish it. It's still sitting here staring at me, making me feel guilty. Sorry, there's it's under a pattern right now. So it's still sitting there making me feel guilty with one sleeve on needles that are too big. 
I will try to either find my size 60 pins or find a workaround or something this week because I'm sure I have lots of size six uh, circulars. I know I know I've got at least a couple of sock sets. So I will try to find a way to finish this this week. Um, I'm working Tuesday and Wednesday nights, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's all the knitting I got done. I did not take my color affection back out of hibernation. Well, short-term hibernation. It's been on hiatus for a couple of weeks. Um, I did not cast on the hat I intended to cast on this week. I didn't do any of the things I intended to do this week. So, including laundry. <laughs> I did not get my laundry done. <laughs> so I'm sort of scraping the bottom of the barrel for clothes right now, and I really do need to get some laundry done because otherwise I'm not going to have clean pants for tomorrow. Um, so that's project number one as soon as I'm done recording. Uh, I did receive something this week that made me very, very excited. And for those of you who are coming to Ryan Beck, please come and hit me up at the podcast you need it because look what I got. They are buttons. I had buttons made with the podcast logo. And they were super reasonable and they came super fast. And I have a hundred of them. And I'm discovering that they're not closed in the bag, so I'm going to have to be careful when reaching in to hand them out. <laughs> I only got one inch buttons, so they have these sort of like, that way. Come on, camera. You can do it. Okay, well, you can see what kind of closure they have. Oh, there we go, it focused. Um, so they're not like super fancy buttons. I think Rob suggested that next year I buy a larger size and have New York Sheep and Wool 2018 or 2019 next year uh, printed on them to make them sort of collectible. Sort of. <laughs> I think he's a bit of a nerd and uh, he's getting way too into this thing. <laughs> but it's a great idea. So that's what I, I think I'm going to do next year. So come and see me at the podcast meetup and I will give you a button and maybe a hug because I'm a huggy person. And, uh, so yeah, come and say, Hey, or if you see me anywhere else at the festival, I'll have them with me. Um, I'm so looking forward to Ryan Beck. We are super psyched. Um, this year it's only Sue and I in our cabin cause my, my poor friend Elizabeth, um, <laughs> she forgot that Ryan Beck weekend was her son's birthday. So she cannot come. Uh, it's going to be his second birthday. We're very excited. Master George is a very cool kid, and uh, so um, she will not be coming with us this year. So there's only two of us in our four-person cabin, and uh, but all our other friends who normally hang out with us at Rhinebeck, um, Sarah from the Canadian Air Podcast, Jen from the Uncreative Crafter Podcast, uh, Jess from the Sarah Nova Crafts podcast and Mandy from Mandy Pineco Crafts podcast are all also going to be in a cabin. And Andrea from the Cat Lady podcast is going to be in another cabin with her husband. So the three of us, the, th the three cabins are going to be like pretty much hanging out, having tea parties every night. Holly, Selma, Crystal, and Kate from the Hawthorne Cottage Craft podcast. Kate, only Kate is from that podcast. Selma is Little Big Nits and the other two don't podcast. Um, they're going to be renting a house in Kingston this year, so they won't be, you know, close up close and personal with us. But we will get to have dinner together, and I'm sure we'll hang out together over the weekend. Um, so I'm super, super looking forward to it. And I'm starting to be a little bit more zen about it, because I was starting to freak out about money and um, how I was going to afford it, and so on and so forth. But you know what? I'm taking it slow. I'm breathing. I, I don't want to buy big bags of yarn anyway because um, I've been desperately trying to reduce my stash a little bit. So the one purchase, the one big purchase I'm planning, I want to get a Cricut Loom. I'm hoping to get a 15 inch, but I would be happy even with a 10 inch. But I'm, I'm looking to get a Cricut Loom so that I can start to reduce some of my older stash that I bought when I was just learning to knit. Most of it's acrylic. Most of it's what am I going to make with it sort of thing. So I'm hoping to get a Cricut Loom so that I can start, you know, making things like small blankets and scarves and things that I can donate. So that's my goal. Um, and 
we just love the area. We love, you know, bopping around exploring the area. We went on a hiking trail a couple of years ago uh, with Holly and Crystal. Was it Holly? Selma and Crystal, sorry. Swallowing my hair here. Um, so, you know, we found this really cool hiking trail that was built by a monk <laughs> and has been maintained by the monastery ever since. Um, we have, we always spend a little bit of time in Woodstock. We've explored all kinds of stuff. Uh, Rob and I have been to the aerodrome with the kids. Um, the aerodrome is definitely worth visiting. Totally worth visiting. But their big thing is on Saturdays, which is the big day of the festival. So if you are interested in antique planes, antique cars, anything, um, hit up the aerodrome on Saturday and go to Rhinebeck on Sunday. It's a lot less crowded anyway. And you won't be missing out because, sorry, most of the bigger vendors hold back some of their stock for Sundays. So you won't be missing out. That's my recommendation anyway. I have not been congested for like three days. And today all of a sudden it's like, <laughs> I think it was the campfire I was around yesterday. Um, I don't deal well with wood smoke. And uh, we'll get into what I was all excited about last last week. Um, I told you guys I was going on a mushroom walk. Um, I signed up for this class and I was so psyched about it. We got there yesterday and the first thing you do is you get off at the main road, get off the bus, and you walk about a kilometer on some rather rough, it's a driveway, but it's pretty rough terrain anyway because there was a huge storm the night before and there were lots of breaths filled with water and there was like, detouring and stuff like that and at one point part of the road had washed away so it was pretty rough going up a really steep hill <laughs> for almost a kilometer <coughs> and that that took a pretty big physical toll just to walk to where our starting point and then we had to wait around the campfire while he gave us this little talk and so on and so forth. And at that point, I was just physically done. My lungs were like, nope, we're not doing this today. Um, I, I had started a cold last week and I was, it, it's literally just been in my sinuses the whole week. Um, the campfire, I I don't think it's the cold really that's that's bothering me. I th my, my lungs just were not happy about that campfire. And I started choking and coughing and, and not being able to get enough air before we started walking. So then there was a walk down to the main trail. And I looked at the trail and the trail was all uphill, like really, really uphill. And um, I was out of breath and having trouble just getting down to the trail. So I went to the organizer and I said, I can't do this. I'm going to go back to the beginning and I'm going to sit and I'm going to wait for you guys. That way everybody can have a good time anyway. And uh, thank God I had my dinning because this all got done yesterday. <laughs> Fortunately, I don't need the pattern for this anymore. I've, I've, It's pretty intuitive and you can usually figure it out by sight. So uh, I didn't need the pattern. I stopped where I did about an hour before they got back because it was a three and a half hour walk. Um, and a lot of the other people who were on the walk said, yeah, wow, that trail was hard, really hard. Um, cause it's all uphill. It's on the side of a mountain and a lot of it is off the trail. Um, so several, there were several old, much, much older people there. Um, I mean, there were people there older than my parents and, um, they had a really hard time. So I'm actually going to send an email to the organizer saying, look at, I think you should be advertising this as an advanced hike. Um, this is not just a walk in the park type of thing. This was advertised as we're going to have a leisurely stroll and look for mushrooms. No, this was like a major hike and all uphill. So it, it's hard. And, you know, people who tend to be in better shape, don't tend to, <clears throat> excuse me, don't tend to consider that not everybody can handle this stuff, like <clears throat> just walk out and I'm going to pause this because I can't, hang on. 
I'm very sorry about that. All of a sudden, I was just overcome with congestion and throat stuff. So that was fun. Sorry. Um, so, yeah, I don't think that uh, the people who can do this stuff without effort take any, like, it doesn't occur to them to consider that maybe not everybody who signs up for this thing will be up for it. Um, because there was no indication of this is going to be a hard walk in the in the advertisement. I would not have signed up for it if, had I known because I wasted my money and I am very disappointed that I didn't get to participate. And pretty much ruined my weekend. Um, I was not impressed. So I'm, you know, I don't begrudge them the fact that it was a hard walk. I begrudge them the fact that they didn't tell anybody it was going to be a hard walk. Um, cause a couple of other people got on the bus and they were like, I couldn't finish. I couldn't go all the way to the end. It was, it was too much. There was a lady there with a cane and she was like, I wish I had stayed with you. <laughs> Things to consider. I know the guy who's teaching the workshops, um, he's just started uh, really ramping up the, the, the teaching of these workshops. So maybe it's just not something he's considered. Maybe it's feedback he hasn't gotten yet. So I am going to write him an email saying, look, at, you, you need to advertise these as advanced hikes because I never would have signed up for it had I known. Um, it was humiliating, I'll be honest. And I'm still a little bit emotional about it. Emotional about it. Um, it was humiliating to be the only person who couldn't even start out on the walk. So, and I mean, I know that I have physical limitations. I know that I have joint problems. I know that I'm painfully out of shape. <laughs> um, but normally, I can handle a bit of physical exertion. Uh, the campfire did play a big role in me not being able to, uh, to participate and that was not their fault at all. They would have no reason to assume that people can't handle being around a little bit of wood smoke. And to be honest, I was quite shocked because that's the first time I've reacted that strongly to wood smoke. So, um, things conspired. I didn't get to go on the mushroom walk. Um, even though I did get bust an hour out there and an hour back. <laughs> Um, one of the gentlemen who was there has been on several of these walks and, um, he brought me back a bag of mushrooms. He said, I have more, I picked more than I would ever use. So I would like to give these to you. So I have a bag of honey mushrooms in my car, which are going to my cousin's house this afternoon. He's very excited. So, um, and we were careful. There is a poisonous lookalike for honey mushrooms and, uh, the instructor did actually manage to find two growing in the area so he picked them and to show us the difference uh so that we could figure out the differences and make sure that we hadn't picked any up my bag is fine the guy who picked mine was very experienced and um so anyway it was a dis disappointing endeavor and of course then i had to go to work and be on my feet for four and a half hours <laughs> All while my legs were screaming at me because just the walk to the beginning of the trail was more than, yeah, <laughs> it was humiliating. So, um, my goal now at this point is to, sorry, I have hair in my mouth, start going back to the gym, working on my endurance so that the next time I end up in a situation like this, I'm not sidelined and I'm not humiliated and I'm frustrated and I'm angry at myself because I should be able to handle something like this. I don't know if that's going to help my ability to cope with wood smoke if I get around a campfire, but I know now to stay away from it. You know, don't stand right in the, because the, the place where he gives his lectures was right by the campfire and I could have just, you know, moved a little bit further away. I would have missed most of the lecture, but I, I would have been able to breathe at least. My lungs hurt so much last night uh, when I got home from work. It was just like, it was painful. And I've never felt anything like that before. It was, it was, I was pretty panicked because I was like, crap, is this what asthma feels like? And I, I like, my cousin's asthmatic. I've had friends who are asthmatic. My my daughter has lung difficulties. Whenever she gets sick, she gets really, really sick and it sticks around for a long time. Um, she's never been diagnosed as asthmatic, but at one point her pediatrician did prescribe her um, inhalers. 
So I was I was pretty panicked. I was like, is this what this feels like? I don't like this. <laughs> so, because I just couldn't catch my breath after that. It took a really long time of just sitting on a bench and knitting before I was able to even like sort of, okay, okay, I can make it back down the hill now. <laughs> I'm glad I recognized my physical limitations and did not start up the walk because what if I'd gotten stuck up there? What if I'd, you know, gotten injured? What if I had just not been able to get back down? That would have put everybody out and it would have really, really been humiliating. So I'm glad I recognized that I wasn't going to be able to do it right at the beginning and just sat it out. Um, I'm disappointed that I, you know, paid the money and couldn't go, but, um, better that I <sighs> there are times when I would have forced myself to go up the walk and I would have been miserable and it, I'm glad I sat it out and spared myself the additional embarrassment of having to be gotten out of there which happened on my honeymoon but that's another story <laughs> <coughs> so um, that was my weekend it was a bummer, and uh, I'm not going to be signing up for a class like that again for a while. <sighs> it is something that really interests me, but I think what I'm going to do for now is do as much book and internet research as I can um, to learn what I'm looking for and that sort of thing, and uh, see if maybe I can do a little independent mushrooming. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll see. Um, I would like to try again at some point, but for now it's just not, not physically feasible. So it is what it is. Um, I did watch an embarrassing amount of TV this week. Well, not TV so much. I was watching movies mostly, but it was, it was ridiculous. I got nothing done around the house because I was so pooped every night. I would just come home, plop a movie on and just sit here and veg. And I gotta stop doing that because nothing's getting done around the house. <laughs> um, so this week I checked out an episode of Brooklyn Nine Nine. I actually checked out two episodes. I started with because um, apparently my son had watched some of it, and I use his Netflix. Um, my ex and I share a Netflix account. Uh, it was originally his account, but then I started paying for it, and just because um, his credit card got replaced and he didn't update the payment thing and whatever. Long story short, um, I use my son's. He's got four accounts set up on his Netflix. He's got his, his girlfriend's, my daughter's, and my son's. So I use my son's um, because we have pretty much the same viewing habits, largely. Um, he likes a little bit more anime than I do, and I like some sappier stuff that he wouldn't watch. But other than that, our viewing habits are pretty much in sync. So uh, one of my friends had actually suggested that I check out Brooklyn Nine-Nine. And it turned out that my son had been watching it. So um, when I hit it on Netflix, it started with episode season five, episode one. And I was like, what the heck is going on? This cannot be the first season. So I checked, and sure enough, it was not the first season. And so I checked out season one, episode one. Really not my thing. Not my kind of comedy. Um, I had the same problem when I started trying to watch The Office. I didn't find it the slightest bit funny. Um, it's just not my kind of comedy. Um, I tried watching the IT crowd. Same problem. I And normally I love British comedies, but this one just completely fell flat for me. Um, I think what I have difficulty with is comedies that base their base the comedy in making fun of people's personality tics and things like that. I don't tend to find that very funny because that's why I was made fun of for most of my life. And I I just can't appreciate it the way some people can. And I feel bad because I really wanted to like this show. And I just, no, well, after one episode, I was like, no, I'm not going to watch another one of these. So... That fell flat. I didn't watch, I didn't like Brooklyn Nine-Nine. I think I ha I don't particularly like Adam Sandberg. Um, I don't remember 
seeing him in anything else, I mean, he's not a very memorable person in my mind. Um, but I, I get the feeling from this that I have not liked him in something else. So I don't know. Um, I don't tend to like Will Ferrell. Um, I do tend to like Steve Carell, which is why I was a little disappointed with The Office, because I do really tend to like him in movies. But uh, I'm finding that I'm picky about what I like him in. Um, I really liked him in Bruce Almighty and Evan Almighty. Um, loved him in Get Smart. He was hilarious. But then there have been a couple of other things that I haven't liked him as much in. So maybe it's the type of comedy. Um, I did like Will Ferrell in Elf. I have liked him in a couple of things, but his general, like his all out in your face comedy, like, uh, Anchorman and Dodgeball and stuff like that. Not even interested in watching them. I'm weirdly picky about my comedy. <laughs> so anyway, that was, that was one failure. Uh, then I decided because I've, I've had it on my list forever and I've heard such good things about it. I started watching Queer Eye. The, the reboot. I love it so, so much. I love it so much. Um, the first two episodes, and I was crying. Um, I'm not sure about the guy in the second episode, like the guy they were helping in the second episode. I'm. It, it seemed like a very night and day transformation in his personality. And I'm not sure how that happened exactly. But um, like the first guy, oh, God, I fell in love with him. He's so sweet. And I really, really hope that he gets back together with his ex-wife. They're so cute. But anyway, so I really enjoyed that. And I'm going to be watching more of that. But I'm not binging it. Um, I've, I've decided that I've gotten tired of watching all of a show all in one go. It's it's too much for me. And then I, I get really, really into it, like really invested in it. And it sort of starts interfering with my outside life. <laughs> Because all I'm thinking about is this show and these characters, and, and I I need to have a life outside of that. So um, I'm breaking it up a little bit. I've gotten back back to my Marvel list, uh, watching everything in order. So um, you'll remember that I had already watched Captain America and a, a, uh, Agent Carter. So this week I watched Iron Man and The Incredible Hulk. I actually just finished watching The Incredible Hulk this morning. Both of them came out in 2008. Um, I've always had a soft spot for Iron Man, but I don't think I had seen The Incredible Hulk a second time after it came out. So that one surprised me a little bit. Uh, I had remembered it as being meh and not liking the casting and I don't, I didn't remember the cutscene at the end at all. So, um... William Hurt makes a slightly too convincing bad guy because I really dislike him now. <laughs> <laughs> and this is what I mean by getting too invested with, with characters. There are certain actors that I won't watch anymore because they were too good at being bad. And I just, I, I, mm -mm. <laughs> and I'm afraid William Hurt might end up being one of those. But, uh, you know, I remember thinking that Edward Norton was a really poor casting choice. And I have to admit that I watched most of this movie thinking to myself, how would this have looked with Mark Ruffalo in the role instead of Edward Norton? And I think it would have been amazing with Mark Ruffalo. But Edward Norton didn't do a bad job. Um, I don't think Liv Tyler was the appropriate casting there. I, I just wasn't buying it. I was seeing... Um, what the heck is it called? Armageddon? I kept seeing Armageddon in my head and Lord of the Rings. I don't, stupid fly, um, I don't really buy her as a versatile actress. She's the same in every lovesick woman role she plays. She, she is exactly the same. She was the same in Lord of the Rings. She was the same in Armageddon. She was the same in that thing you do. She's always exactly the same. I just don't see her as a versatile actress that I can believe in different roles. She plays the same role every time. Unlike, you know, you watch somebody like Meryl Streep, who you really believe as the bitch boss in Double Wears Prada, and then you believe that she's some, like, hippie, strung out, super fun lady in Mamma Mia, and you believe that she's a bitter, vindictive ex-wife in 
Kramer versus Kramer. Like, she's the type of person who can change her personality to suit the role. Liv Tyler doesn't change her personality. She's just her. And I... I don't want to say she's a bad actress, but I, I... There's only so many times you can watch the same performance, right? In different movies. <sighs> <clears throat> I'm going to make people angry now and say that I feel the same way about Jack Nicholson. He's just himself on screen. <laughs> so anyway, I watched the Iron Man. I watched the Incredible Hulk. I watched the beginning of Kung Fu Panda 3. Because I didn't know there was a third one. <laughs> I really enjoyed the first one. The second one was kind of meh. Uh, the third one is even more meh. And I got 20 minutes into it and stopped watching it, <laughs> to be honest. And I'm a little disappointed little disappointed. Step it up, DreamWorks. Quit making sequels to things and make original stuff. That's what you're good at. So, anyway, that's all the stuff I've watched. <laughs> <coughs> so, I have been plugging away at An Acceptable Time by Madeline Lingle, and I'm making good headway with it, and I'm very much enjoying it. It's a really good ad addition to that series. I'm really enjoying uh, watching it. I have no stash to show you. Well, I haven't had any stash to show you since the podcast started. So that's nothing new. But, um, so that's about all I've been doing. Work, sleep, work, sleep. Hack up along a little bit. Work, sleep. <laughs> so I'm hoping to be able to get a little bit more done this week. Um, I'm trying to sort of prep things a little bit more considering the fact that I won't be home in the evenings some sometimes during the week. Next week, I actually start my class. Um, I'm taking an uh, exploring Judaism class at the temple. Um, I'm in the process of converting to Judaism, so it's <clears throat> a required class for that, for, for me to become a bat mitzvah, and uh, for the conversion process. So I'm very much looking forward to that. I did take a class a couple of years ago at another temple, and uh, while I very much enjoyed the learning Hebrew part and learning to read and write Hebrew, um, I didn't so much enjoy the exploration. I didn't get along with the rabbi there. Um, he and I sort of butted heads a lot, and uh, he was extremely misogynistic and very short with people, I found. Um, the rabbi that I'm with now is lovely and fantastic and wonderful, and I love her. Um, so I did actually end up going to, um, Erev Yom Kippur last week, which was my first high holiday service. And I, it was amazing. Um, it's called the Coleman Dray service. And I promise I'm not going to get all religious on you guys. I, I swear I'm not going to start talking about temple all the time, but I have to tell you, we have a member of the congregation who is a cellist and we have another one who is a pianist. And they performed the Col de Dre. Um, I think it's a piece of music. Um, and it was my it was breathtaking. It was amazing. I was crying. It was so powerful. And then we had the service, so you know, whatever. But just the musical thing at the beginning was amazing. I would go back a million times just to just to listen to that. I would have been happy with just that all evening, but we, we did get the rest of it too. So, um, yeah, I haven't had a lot of at home time this week and I'm looking forward to a little bit more of that in the next few weeks. Um, not next weekend, but the weekend after Rob will be here cause it's Thanksgiving and my birthday. Yay. Yay. I'm going to be 43. Woohoo. <laughs> Birthdays don't get as thrilling after you hit 40. It's just like, yeah, it's just another one. At least I thought that's how I feel anyway. But uh, yeah, so in two weeks, Rob will be here for Thanksgiving, Canadian Thanksgiving and my birthday. So the episode will probably be late Sunday that week. Um, it may actually, no, it won't be Monday because I have to drive back. Yeah, I'm driving him to Syracuse. He's actually taking the train in. So I have to drive down to Syracuse to get him on the Saturday morning. And then I have to drive back on the Monday evening to drop him off. And he'll be getting home Tuesday morning on the train. So now I feel like I'm just babbling about everything and nothing. And I'm going to be quiet. So um, I really hope that you guys all have a great week. And uh, 
hopefully you guys are getting more knitting done than I am. See you next week. Bye.